Hi, my name is Dylan and welcome to chapter 15 of the Barron's AP Economics book. In this video, I will be covering what you need to know for the AP exam. Here's what you need to know about inflation and unemployment, the two main topics of this chapter. You need to know what inflation is, what the CPI and the GDP deflator are. You also need to know what unemployment and the various types of unemployment are. And you also need to know what the unemployment rate is. First off, inflation occurs when the overall prices rise in the economy. If a hamburger costs $1 now and it costs $2 next year, that's inflation. The inflation rate measures the rate in which prices change in the economy. It's usually measured via the CPI, or the Consumer Price Index. The C Consumer Price Index is calculated by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which indexes a basket of household goods, some 90,000 plus, and measures the average rate of change of these prices. It then compares the total toss of these goods to, for a certain year to a base year. And the change between these two years is the CPI. The exact formula is total cost for one period divided by the total cost for the base period times 100 to find the percentage. However, the CPI is not 100% accurate. It fails in aspects that cannot be measured by price. For example, a car today will definitely cost more than a Model T in 1900, but it also has power steering, airbags, GPS, etc. Simply the comparing the two prices fails to, to account for all the other stuff that also include that's also included in the new car. Also, stuff like cell phones used to cost three thousand dollars, but now it's like a hundred. The decrease in prices would be measured as deflation, and it would skew the CPI. But and it would seem like the goods are getting cheaper, even though it's just easier to produce cell phones now. Again, this will drastically skew the data. Another way of measuring inflation is using the GDP deflator. The GDP deflator is simply a number that compares inflation-adjusted GDP to nominal GDP. By comparing GDP deflators between years, it provides a ac fairly accurate way of measuring inflation rates. The inflation rate is calculated by subtracting one year's GDP deflator from another and dividing that by the other GDP deflator to find the percentage change. Inflation does a lot of things. It hurts people whose incomes aren't adjusted to compensate for inflation. Most people's incomes, most people's incomes are adjusted, however, because when prices rise, companies make more money and therefore they pay their people more. However, some people's incomes aren't adjusted. Inflation also destroys savings because savings don't keep up with inflation. It also reduces efficiency because it creates what's called menu costs, or literally the cost of changing menu pr menus to reflect updated prices. Inflation also hurts lenders because when people pay their loans, they're paying it back with money that's worth less than it was when the, where it's worth less than when the loan was given out. Therefore, lender will often lenders will often charge interest rates that accommodate for inflation. Nominal interest inflation rate is equal to the real interest rate. A plus I've seen the nominal interest rate is equal to the real interest rate plus inflation. So if my interest rate was 5% and inflation is 2%, my real interest rate is 3%. Unemployment occurs when people in the economy are not currently working for reasons that, for reasons other than, for any reasons actually, any, any reasons. This means that labor is not used to its fullest potential and that current production is inside the production's possibility frontier. This is a major problem during recessions, whenever real GDP is declining. Unemployment is calculated with the unemployment rate, which divides the to currently un unemployed by the total labor force. However, this is pretty tricky. The unemployment rate does not include people who are tired, minors, so-called discouraged workers, basically people who can work but aren't seeing work because, seeking work because, because they, they don't think they can find some. So your average homeless guy on the street, he doesn't count as part of the unemployment rate, even though he is unemployed, because there's actually no physical way of counting them. The rate only accounts people, counts people unemployed who are still seeking work. The unemployment rate also doesn't count students. College students who are unemployed don't get counted into the, into the unemployment rate. This combination of factors will cause the unemployment rate to actually underestimate the real unemployment rate. So there are four types of unemployment. Frictional unemployment is when someone is switching between jobs or start just starting to look for a job. If I'm working at a company and I leave it because I want more money, I'm frictionally unemployed. Seasonal unemployment is when someone is looking for a job in the off season that they're not working. If I'm a, if I'm a ski lift operator, I'm seasonally unemployed in the summer. 
Structural unemployment is when the economy is structured in a way that hurts the person. If I'm a factory worker who can't find a job because factory work has been replaced by machinery, I'm structurally unemployed. Cyclical unemployment occurs when people lose jobs in a recession. If I have a good job right now and I get laid off because the economy is getting worse, I'm cyclically unemployed. There is a term in macroeconomic called full employment. However, full employment doesn't actually mean that the unemployment rate is zero. It just means that there's no cyclical unemployment. There will always be seasonal, structural, and fictional unemployment. Therefore, a 0% unemployment rate is impossible. Realistically, full employment is about 5% for the United States. Later on, full employment is a very important concept to know because it means that the economy is operating at 100% potential output. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this video.